Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Direct Live calibrator. How are you all doing? Well, I hope. In this video, I just want to bring up a little topic that I think is really interesting because uh, I've had the Cord Electronics Hugo M scaler, which hopefully you can see down there, but bump kind of between my feet for uh, four months, something like that. And I haven't made any videos on it at all because it's just one of those products. I, I, I borrowed one for a I think a week, two weeks, I just bought it instantly because I could hear instantly what it did to the sound of the Cord Electronics Cutest. So kind of it made perfect sense, you know, Hugo M Scaler to improve the sound of a Cord deck. Now, I remember talking to Rob Watts months ago about the Hugo M Scaler, I think when it's first launched and I said to him, you know, one of the things in the spec sheet for it is, is that it, it can and will improve the sound of any deck. And I remember asking him about it and I said to him, you know, how does that work? How is that going to work with other decks? And I think he said to me, he's really not sure because he said, obviously, it's impossible for him to test every single DAC out there. Most people out there that own core DACs, probably in the heart, or the back of their mind, if they haven't already, are thinking, oh, I'd love a Hugo M scaler. It's like the obvious choice, especially if you've got one of the newer core DACs where it allows a dual BNC connection to get the maximum upsampling out of your DAC. And basically, your core DAC is going to sound better and quite considerably better with a Hugo M scaler, black and white. What the Hugo M scaler does, there's nothing else that you can do by tweak or add that's gonna do the same as it, it's as simple as that. But what happens if you don't own a Cord DAC, if you own a, a different DAC, you, you know, there's hundreds of DACs out there, loads of different manufacturers. Well, this is the first time that I've had a different DAC in this system. I've got at the moment to review the SMSL M300 DAC, down there in red. Now that is a standalone DAC, it's a budget DAC at the price of £212 from Amazon. It's not bad. You know, it's not a bad DAC by standards of the whole world. You know, you can get a lot better, but it's not bad. But it sounds a whole lot better when you use the Hugo M scaler to upsample up to, I think it must be 356, something like that. So we're only using one you know, SP diff cable connection. So we can only get half of what the Hugo M scaler can do. But even at half of what it can do, the difference in sound quality is extremely dramatic. So that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to do a song sampler so you can have a little listen, just a couple of pieces of music. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it live. I'm going to turn the Hugo M uh, scaler on and then I'll take it out and I'll put it back in again. So it's not going to be perfect because there's a bit of a break when you take it out. So let me just explain what you're listening for. It'll be bloody obvious what you're listening for, but what kind of the visual cue will be that you, so you know the Hugo M scaler is on. There's two. If you look, see down here, we've got a load of dots, which probably makes it more confusing. The, oh, not that one. Turn that one off. The third dot in, this one here. So we've got white and then we've got red. When that red goes green, or really when it goes blue, that will be the Hugo M scaler on and up sampling to the highest that I can. When it's red, that's in bypass mode. So we're still going through the Hugo M scaler from the computer to the Hugo M scaler to the DAC, but it's in bypass. So we're not applying any of the uh, WTA filtering or the up sampling. What you'll also see, if I quickly do it, on the DAC itself, we get a little yellow logo comes up, which says that it's receiving like a high high res audio file. Obviously, we're only playing CD rips 1644 that the Hugo M scale is up sampling because that is the maximum that it can work with at the moment. You know, uh, CD red book size files, but that's 99% of the music out there, so it's absolutely fine. So when you see the yellow and when you see the blue, that's the Hugo M scale. Now I can go up to it with no break. When I come out from it, you get like a slight break, you pause, and, and then the music will carry on, which in a way is good because you can kind of reset yourself every time I do it. So let's see how we get on. So we'll put it in red mode. Let's see how we get on, see how this comes out. Be a really interesting one. I've not done this before. Um, and I'll come back and talk at the end. Cool. So we're gonna start off with the Hugo M scaler in bypass, so off. <laughs> Thank you. 
senhor da floresta Um índio guerreiro da raça tupi Vivia pescando Sentado na margem do rio Chuí Seus olhos rasgados No entanto fitavam ao longe Uma taba Na qual habitava A filha formosa De um moro bichava um dia encontraram Senhor da floresta No rio Chuí Crivado de flechas De longe atiradas Por outro tupi Filha formosa Do Moro Bixaba Quando anoiteceu Correu subindo a montanha No fundo do abismo desapareceu Naquele momento Alguém viu no espaço A luz do luar Senhor da floresta De braços abertos Risonho a falar Ó oh, virgem guerreira Ó oh, virgem mais pura Que a luz da manhã Iremos agora Unir nossas almas Aos pés de Hopefully my, uh, put that remote control down, hopefully my uh, kind of actions at the end there were trying to help kind of get across the differences there. Hopefully they, um, I'm sure they'll be really, really audible. Hopefully you've heard the quite clear, very, very obvious differences. Now bear in mind we are up sampling. When the Hugo M samplers, uh, Hugo Miscaders in use, it's up sampling the music. 
Now, I asked Rob Watts why that is and why he does that, and it's, he said it's to, it's to do with the timing of the music. It's to get the timing down to a really low, I think it's like nanosecond or something like that. I can't remember the, the term of measurement, but he said that the more up I go in our up sampling, the more the timing I can get right, right down. Because um, I'm, I'll, I'll link it up there. I'm, I filmed a lecture that he gave, and he was talking about the human, uh, how sensitive our ears are to timing differences. So the Hugo M scalar is all about you know, the t um, over a million tap length filters. What does that mean? That's the amount of processing that's needed to fully recreate an analog waveform. That's really what it boils down to, but only a 16-bit 44 file size. And that took him pretty much a lifetime to be able to put the code together to be able to do that. That's a major, major, major thing. You can hear it. You can totally, totally hear it. Black and white, night and day. With the Hugo M scaler off, I mean, bear in mind, this is a budget deck. It still sounds pretty good, right? It sounds pretty good. But the sound is, it's all fuzzy and it's compressed. Most of the main bits are fine. You get a nice mid-range. It's clean, it's clear. A lot of that is this system. This is a really, you know, high-end system for a 200 quid DAC. So, you know, a lot of it, that's the systems resolving the sound really, really good. So, but when the Hugo M scaler is off, things are kind of, it's like a fuzzy, kind of soft and squidgy and really not that well defined. Some of the bits are defined, sometimes a big vocal. Oh, you can't not make that undefined. That would sound defined on a crappy little Bluetooth speaker. We're not here for that. We're here for a, you know, a quality, high quality, good sound stage, you know, big production of music. That's why you spend all this money on all this system. It's to get a, you know, a musical experience, a big, dynamic, expressive, emotional, one that puts a smile on your face and makes you go all like, all like this. When you add the M scaler in, all of a sudden, it's like the music's sped up. The M scaler off, things sound mechanical and the clarity just goes down and everything just sounds flat and just like, it's like a soft and squishy and messy version. With a Hugo M scaler, bear in mind that's only working at half its capacity so it can get. And when you go up from the blue to, I can't remember the next color up, I think it's white. I can't remember, it's white. When you go up to white, the difference is massive, absolutely. That's the big one. You know, it's, it's better, better, better. Wow, that's that's the big one. So we can't even go up there at the moment because you need a chord deck. And so we're half half the capability, and yet it still makes that much difference. And it's obviously it's the it's equivalent of having a much much better DAC. Should you be considering a Hugo M scaler? Now, if you own a chord DAC. Most, as I said at the beginning, most core DAC owners are probably thinking, I'd love a Hugo M scaler. Whether they can justify the money, you know, for the difference it makes, it's up to them. To me, it's a no-brainer. But is it a no-brainer for every audio file, for every single DAC? Well, after this, you know, I wasn't expecting it. After this experience I've just had, it kind of makes a really strong argument for itself. Now, I just want to point out, Core Electronics didn't give me this M scale. I bought this with my own money. They haven't given me anything. They haven't paid me anything. And I've spent serious time with Core DAX. Listened to them, what they do. Realised lots of mistakes that I was making as an audio file. Then I've had the luxury of speaking to the designers. Rob Watts, I spoke to him a lot. That's a real luxury. Not everybody gets that. You know, that's something that I've had. It, very, very interesting guy. But what he's telling me, what, why he's doing things that he's doing and why that is forward thinking and advanced when you put that into a listening session and an experience the two are the two add up it's not two plus two equals four you can't argue with sound you know you can think about things all you want oh they're feeding me bs you know why do i want to spend four thousand pounds on another DAC to add to my existing DAC the difference it makes Different to changing speakers, different to changing amplifiers. If you run in a digital system, the DAC is crucial. That's the bit that creates the sound. And if what your DAC is doing is creating like a fuzzy version of the, the digital to analog conversion, then you doesn't matter what speakers you've got, doesn't matter what amplifier you've got, doesn't matter what cables you've got, even though those things are all really important, the better the amplifier, the better the speakers, the better the cables, all they're going to do is tell you more of the truth of what's happening at that stage. And throw your money at speakers, throw your money at amplifiers. Bear in mind, that's what's gonna happen. The better the speakers get, the better the amplifier gets, the more of the truth they're gonna tell you for everything else that's going on in your system, for good and for bad. And most of us, 
probably have more good than bad, but not many people have perfection. Hence, we're in pursuit of a perfect system. And, you know, if you're running a digital one, and that conversion, as you've just experienced, is really, really, really important. Even kind of when you're scaling down to 200 pounds worth of DAC. If you're scaling up to thousands of thousands of pounds worth of DAC, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? What the Hugo M scaler does to other DACs, that'd be really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. Because I don't think it's necessarily just the fact that's a 200 pound DAC. I personally think the Hugo M scaler is gonna have that much difference to everything you plug it into. That much improvement, give or take, to everything you plug it into. So that was the purpose of this. And that's why I've called the Hugo M scaler the best thing since sliced bread. It is the best audio thing since sliced bread. I literally, I have one for two weeks and just went out and bought it. I was like, that's fixed. Lots of the things that I've been trying to fix. The timing, you know, music's timing. Timing, timing, timing is so, so important. Timing is clarity. Timing is sound stage. Timing is rhythm. And then you create a sound stage that you like and want from your speakers and your apps and cables and stuff. But for that conversion stage, has to be perfect, because if that bit's not perfect, everything else is just gonna tell you that how unperfect that is the whole time you listen to it. Um, so yeah, yeah, pay attention to your DAC. I suppose that's the purpose of this video. Don't believe the BS that people tell you all DACs sound the same, because they do not. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more stuff like this. You know, I'm not always as passionate about stuff, but actually that's, I am. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up, go visit the website, all that jazz. Get really hot in here, it's the second video in a row. So, sorry if I'm sweating a bit. And uh, see you all soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.